a monopolistic. When can a monopolistic competition firm earn an economic profit? Okay, let's start. Yeah, yeah when it's just... The... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, when it's in the beginning, it will earn the, the profit uh, before the other competitors comes in, which is in the long run. So, okay. I think, yeah. All right. So, uh, number one, it says that it, it ends economic profit in the short and in the long run. That's not true, right? We said that there is no firm that makes economic profit in the long run. That's what we said. They, 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 monopolistic doesn't make e economic profit in the long run. And uh, they, neither uh, they make economic profit in neither long run or short run. No, in the short run, they earn what? They're able to make that, isn't it? So yeah. the thing is that they are in the short run, but not in the what? In the long run, they are able to make uh, to earn an economic profit. Is that fine? Yes. Which of the following is not a barrier to entry into a monopoly market? You know, barriers of entry into the monopoly market, right? These are they. Now, which one of the following is not? It means the three of them are they. So <clears throat> when you look at heavy potential advertising costs, who can explain how advertising costs become a barrier to entry? We just were just trying to explain now. Let's validate. How does advertising cost become a barrier to entry? Uh, it okay. disadvantages the small firms which has got little or uh, little resources or limited okay. resources. All right. What about to capital large capital requirement? How does it? Yeah, it's also a barrier in terms of uh, the type of investment, like uh, the, the telephone in the, the, the telecommunication industry. You need to set up towers and all other equipment. So this is also a barrier. Okay. Significant economies of scale. We have known what economies of scale is now. How does it become a barrier to entry of those small, small firms? So maybe because the economies of scale only apply to those firms that are big, like those that are grown. So for the small ones, it cannot benefit them because they are not yet there. Okay. So there are those benefits that are there when the firms grow, right? That come as a result of economies of scale. Like they have grown, even advertising, they no longer advertise, you know, there is some brand loyalty sometimes. It is very difficult for these young, young uh, firms to compete. Therefore, constant returns to scale is not. <sighs> Which one of the following conditions indicates that a firm is operating in a perfect competitive industry rather than a monopolistic? The cost curves are U shaped. Mm. The cost curves are you shaped in a perfect competition. No, it's it is horizontal. Okay. The the marginal revenue equals the average revenue. That's what it differentiates. Because we are trying to look at how different it is now, like from perfect competition and the monopolistic. Which one shows that this is perfect competition, not monopolistic? In short, what's the difference? In the perfect competition.
Okay. So we said that in the perfect competition, always the marginal cost cuts the what? The average cost at the what? At the minimum, isn't it? At minimum point, that's what we said. It cuts that, including the average variable cost. They are all cut at the minimum in the what? Um, in the perfect, during the perfect competition market, isn't it? I think we highlighted these points. They, they, they were highlighted. Uh, <clears throat> what's this? A monopolist can sell 25 units of output per day at the price of that, and the 26 units of output per day for a price of 11.25 each. The marginal revenue from the 26 is sold. No, unity sold is what? So in short, what is the marginal revenue? You remember how we find marginal revenue, right? Which is change in what? Eh? Total revenue, total revenue two minus total revenue one over units, I eh? Output eh? two minus eh? output eh? one. How do we find total revenue? We multiply price times, eh? times quantity, it gives us total revenue. So marginal revenue one at first unit, we have got uh, 25 units times 11 point what? 11.50. 11 what do we get as the first marginal uh, total revenue? T1. TR1 is what? 287.5. Sorry? 287.5. Okay, 200, 287.5. Mm -hmm. What about the second one? So the second one, it means the, the price will be 11.25, then the units are 26, right? So say 26 times 11.25. What do you get at the total revenue to? 292.5. 292.5, all right? So we have found, then we can plug into our formula, okay? We can plug into our formula now. Uh, TR2 is 292.5 minus 287.5 divided by output. Q2 is what? What is Q2? Output two. 26, then output number one is 25. What do we get? What do we get as the as the <clears throat> the marginal ribbon? One. What? Five. It's one. 292.5 minus 287.5. It should give you what? Hmm? Five, isn't it? Five. Yes. So that's how you find your marginal revenue. Okay, basically those are just, you know, the same applications that you had uh, <clears throat> those days. But anyways, <clears throat> that's what is there. Uh, a king to demand curve model of oligopoly is based on the assumption that, you know a king to demand curve, right? Like a king to demand curve is like this one. Okay, this is the, the demand curve. It is bent I, like that. That's a king to demand curve for oligopoly. So the question of the day is, um, the assumption is that what? What's the assumption? Okay, number one. So one firm in the industry sets the price for all other firms. Is that the case? All right, <clears throat> so what happens is that, of course, it's not really that one firm sets for everyone. Uh, what happens is that uh, 
It's only that what some uh, the, the first firm sets uh, influences the other ones, okay? Or uh, these guys are interdependent on, they, they depend on each other in terms of the way, how they price. So um, the, the other firm or the second uh, firm is still free to, to decide either to follow or not to follow. It is, it is still free to decide to, to take that or not, usually, that's the case. So we wouldn't really say that uh, <clears throat> it just has to do that. So the price charged by a firm can either rise or fall, just depending on what is happening to the competitors, okay? So usually what happens is that we say that the, the competitors understand that there is interdependence in the market, okay? They depend on each other. That's what we are trying just uh, to, <clears throat> to highlight. <clears throat> the third degree differentiation refers to the situation where what is the price differentiation? What is the third degree? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, what happens is that there are three degrees of, sometimes you call them price discrimination, okay? Price discrimination. Uh, there is the first one, first degree, the second degree, and the third degree, okay? So what happens is that uh, during the third degree, a firm charges customers different prices according to how much they have purchased. Just according to how much they have purchased. So you, you are just trying to charge them, oh, these they have, they have gotten how much, okay? You know those th that kind of pricing whereby the one who is purchasing more is charged less, right? Eh? For example, when you are when you are when you are studying at Amazing Excellence, if you are just doing only one course, you are just paying maybe just a five hundred kwacha, right? And the, if you are if you are doing three courses, what happens? Just pay seven hundred and fifty kwacha, isn't it? Very cheap, right? So when you are doing more, you are charged less. Are, are you following that, right? Eh? We are deceiving discriminating, we are differentiating the price. Did you get that? <clears throat> yes. Okay. Then what about first degree? Maybe you, you have to understand again. <clears throat> so with the, the first degree, what happens is that uh, first degree, a firm charges each customer the maximum price they are willing to, to pay. That's first degree, okay? So you ask the cash, okay, it's more like, you know that kind of pricing whereby you ask the people, okay, how much are you willing? Like, not really are you willing, how much can you manage? You know those things, right? You tell somebody the quality of the good, do, you know this thing, that side, they charge it this much, manage for you now. How much can you pay? You know those things, right? So what happened is that uh, somebody will just tell you whatever they are willing and uh, you're trying to get uh, all, the idea is to get all the consumer surplus, right? Is to get all the consumer surplus. That's what you are, you're just trying to do. Did you get that? Yes, we got that. The second degree. Sir, come what again with the first degree. Like this, this one, we are saying that uh, you are asking, like you are charging the consumers uh, according to how much they are willing to pay, okay? How much they are willing to pay themselves. So more like you ask them, how much are you willing, uh, not really are you willing, how much can you manage? You know, obviously there are some boundaries that you put, you try to, to guard the behavior, yeah? In this way, you just try to make sure that uh, they don't say the, the lowest amount. Maybe you will tell them that, uh, you know, the quality of this thing, we bought it like that, uh, we usually buy it like that, you know, that kind of selling, right? Eh? When you go to this place, you find it at, at around this much, uh, so you yourself, how much are you willing to do it? To pay, right? Eh? You know, that kind of selling. Like even the seller doesn't have, doesn't really know the exact price, but you get time. Eh? Did you get it? 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, so with the second degree, what happens is that uh, now you charge people according to their geographical positions, where they come from. Have you ever known that uh, there are some <laughs> that the charge according to where you are coming from? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, would, you, would, you, would, you, would you give an example of that? Maybe let me stop uh, talking much on this one. Like they, uh, first, it's about where you're coming from. Beyond that, you, you, you can't give a practical Zambian example on this one. Could you? Hello? Yes, madam. Hello? Yes, I can give one. Yes. For instance, the same, uh, like maybe the same vegetables. If I go to sell to sell it more high cost area, I'll sell it will be expensive. I will like uh, hike the price because I know those people Hello? have got money. Hello. Yes. Are you able to hear me, sir? We can we can hear you. Maybe I'm saying maybe the example I can give according to my own thinking is when I go to high cost areas, the way I will sell my product will be different from the way I will sell it when I'm uh, in the low cost area. Hello? Hello? Of the examples, any other example? All right, thank you. Same thing, same quality, same everything, but it's just because the places where you live are not the same. Any other example? Yes. So the, the other example is the, the way this called uh, view, view us. So it will look at the, the locations, uh, let's say, like example here in Kitwe, they will look the, the, the way they are going to build, the people are staying in each Chmwemwe will be different to the way they are going to build people who are staying in Parkland. Okay. okay. Yeah. Anyway, thank you very much. That is called the price what? Eh? Discrimination. That's uh, the price discrimination. Charging people according to where they come from. Sometimes people just ask me, you know those questions? So you have to be understanding when somebody, for example, you go to buy something, right? Then somebody, or to, to get a, or maybe some consultancy services. Then as you are trying to do some to my chatting, they ask, you know, where is home? Where do you come from? You know those things, right? Uh, they, want to, <laughs> they want to know how to discriminate you nicely. Those are concepts that you learn under economics. Anyways, <clears throat> you have gotten that one. Increasing long run average costs are associated with what? What are they associated with? Obviously, we have seen the answer. The increasing long run uh, average costs, you know that they are associated with increasing returns to scale <clears throat> and um, the price of its output. And so it maximizes profit and minimizes losses when marginal cost is. So in short, when does the perfect competitive uh, competing market, uh, you know, uh, maximize profit? When, when, when? I think I say I, I, I said that, that that point, right? That condition. When is profit maximized? We say that when, when marginal revenue is equal to what? Eh? Marginal cost, right? That is the point. And we know that uh, marginal revenue is equal to what? Eh? Is equal to price under perfect competition, right? That's what we said. And it is also equal to average eh? revenue. So therefore, when eh, the marginal cost eh, is equal to what? Eh? To price. Did you get that? Hello. Hello. Yes, we got it. Average, average living is also a price, not so. Yes, it's the same thing. All right. Under, under perfect competition. 
Uh, which of the following statement is true? Which of the following statement is true? A monopolistically competitive firm does not produce at its minimum ATC in the long run. It is very true. Even if you research, you find that a monopolistically competitive firm cannot successively uh, maintain positive economic profit in the long run. In the long run, that's true. Competitive firms cannot successively maintain positive economic profit in the long run. I, I think that's what we just said the previous, in the previous class that we had just today. Eh? We said that the barriers to entry make it possible for monopolies to earn positive economic profit in the long run. Yeah. So the question is that which one is true? So I've seen that the barriers to entry are the ones that are helping monopolies, okay? Kylie, there are no people enter. So they, they keep on making that, you know. Which of the following? None of the statements are ah, obvious. This one is not. You already know this. And um, anyways, you, you know that. Question number 11, which of the following statement is not a characteristic of perfect competition? You know the perfect, or the, the, the oh, characteristics sir. of- Sorry, sir, that's on that question. Mm -hmm. Which one is which? The, the previous one. Um, I don't know, but uh, I, 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 I said that, uh, a monopolistically competitive firm does not produce at its minimum ATC in the long run. Even if you Google that, that's what is there. Then a monopolistic competitive firm cannot successfully maintain positive economic profit in the long run. The economic profit, because a, a, a monopolistic churn doesn't make economic profit in the long run. And we said that the competitive firms, like those competitive, the competitive firms, those are firms that are, are competitive. A monopoly is not a competitive one. Like uh, <clears throat> cannot successfully maintain positive economic profit in the long run. That's what was said. So uh, I, I, I don't know. I think maybe all the statements um, are, are, are correct. What do you think? Uh, so when we say all st the statements are correct, what about this, the last one? None of the statement. None the of the statement. <laughs> because it's uh, also- it's, it's also it's part also of the statement. statement on it. Yes. So this is how uh, then it, it, uh, then it is tricky. Uh, but uh, I don't know okay, how to answer this one, but uh, I've just highlighted that uh, uh, this one monopolistic uh, and this one, these three, these three are correct. Yes. yes. Then I don't know which one is the answer. Okay. Yes, because if you choose the first one, it means even the last one you have included it to be correct. Okay. This is interesting, eh? None of the statements. Oh yeah. Anyways, uh, yes, madam. So now I have a question. So if mm. you, uh, from the previous, um, sir, so how can you answer this one? Because you cannot tick the three of them. You only have to choose one. And then these three, the, the, the three statements are correct. So if you don't say all of them are correct, how can you answer it? How can you possibly answer it? Ah, Majakai, you know this Kamaka, this Kamaka was just making one answer, isn't it? Was it not just making the choice? Was it not on one or one answer? What, was it allowing you to mark all the answers? Oh, only one, only one. It was only one. Only one. Yeah, it was only just one. allowing one. So that's why I'm saying then, then I don't know. But my concern is to show you what is correct, right? Like you, the statements. My idea is not really to show you that the answer is the all the all the statements or none of the statements. Me, I'm explaining the concepts that these concepts, one, two, three, they are correct. How to choose them, I don't know. And how to answer that's as why I don't I know think, now how you I think it was a free market. <laughs> okay, let's leave it. 
Question number 11, which of the following is not a characteristic of perfect competitive market? So a firm in the perfect competitive market can make it positive, zero or negative economic profit in the short run. That's true. And they have, they have to make zero economic profit in the long run. I think that's what we are just from saying, isn't it? We say that these firms, like they don't make like the, the perfect competitive, they don't make uh, economic profit in the long run, right? So that's what we said. The equilibrium output is both allocative and productive efficient. Yes, in, in, under perfect competition, it is, it is allocatively and productively efficient. The marginal revenue for a perfect competition firm is equal to the price. That is true, isn't it? For a perfect competition, we said that marginal revenue, marginal revenue is equal to what? Price, right? That's what we said, right? So the key thing is that they produce what? Differentiated products. That's not what you said. Perfect competition, they don't produce differentiated what? Products. Instead, what products do they produce? Anybody? What products do they produce? So they produce okay. homogeneous products. Yes, or they produce homogeneous. They, they produce homogeneous or same or identical products. That's what we said. Okay. Which one? Now this one was 17. How did it come? How did it find itself? These questions were not just, are they not ending on 15? Okay, whatever it was. Which of the following most accurately describes the long run post opposition of a monopolistic firm? In the long run, under mon uh, monopolistic firm, what happens? In the long run, marginal revenue is equal to marginal costs, and the price is greater than MC. Price is equal to ATC. <clears throat> what do you think? And a, and a different submission. Okay, so all in all, so that we, we get to understand the answers better, we, we, I recommend that we go through the videos again. Very important, I still recommend that. Uh, because these things like they are, they are ex fully explained, uh, the diagrams are there, we're just talking about the same thing again and again. Which of the following best describes an oligopoly? We are just from talking about oligopolies in the previous study. Which one best describes an oligopoly? A former monopoly that has broken up by the government. No, it's not an oligopoly. Many monopolistic competitive firms. No, no, no. A government granted franchise. So it is basically a few firms I sharing monopoly power. That's oligopoly. Somebody defined that like that, isn't it? Uh, the person who was chosen to answer is that, right? Yes, I see. It's, it's correct. We are we are getting. <laughs> ah, okay. okay. All right. Which of the oh, which of these could do uh, could be considered a government created barrier to market entry? And trust the legislation. What is antitrust legislation? Anybody? Just try to participate. We know you are tired. Only a few questions, maybe two or three have been. What is antitrust legislation? Hello. Antitrust registration. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, what? Okay, what is progressive income tax? We don't know. What is discretionary spending? Anyway, with me on this one, I picked the progressive income tax taxes. A barrier okay. to market entry, yes. Oh, is it created by the government? And how does that how does that become a barrier if it is progressive? Yeah, it's a barrier in the sense that uh, uh, those people are in market who are in business who are rather in market uh, to. Uh, who want to enter the market, uh, they will need uh, some money to for for their business to to thrive. So hence, uh, progressive income taxes are charged on them. So they actually uh, think if they they go into the market, the the government will charge a lot of money before they start making their profits. Okay. What about patents? Who, who creates a patent? And what is a patent, right? Eh? So the, the patent is the, it's the original, it's the original product. So the government to come in to, to make sure that uh, that product is protected from others who want to, to make the same. Okay. The parents of companies and registration agency, PACRA. All right, so that is that is what, what is there. You got it? <laughs> so usually uh, if you research, eh? if you do a research, or oh, not, not really research, I'm, mis I'm misusing the word research. It's not really research. If you, if you try to find out, right? Uh, only the government created barriers to, to market entry. You, 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 you just find patents and copyrights. It's one of them, all right? I don't know about uh, progressive income. Uh, however, it has been explained, but uh, I do not know. In the meantime, I may lie. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I stand to be guided still there. But uh, as for me, in the meantime, I go for patents and the copyright that uh, is a barrier that is created by the government. The government will be there trying to create that barrier for people. Anyway, you are still free to reason with us. Uh, yeah, you can still reason with us. We, since we don't know everything, we can still learn from anyone. Okay. Hey, these questions are not finishing. Which of the following statements about who? Market structure is free. It is true. All unregulated firms, regardless of the type of the market they are in, are productively efficient. No. Right? That is not true. And the, because the think of the think of the monopoly. Is the monopoly efficient? A monopoly is never efficient, right? For example, is ne is never allocated efficient. It is it is never efficient. And um, <clears throat> even in production, they produce what they want. The monopoly guys, they can even produce, even if they know that you want a lot, they'll just produce a few of the goods in terms of quantity or the units, then they'll increase the price so that they can make revenue. 
Those are the guys. Oligopolistic markets are characterized by strategic interactions. That's very true. And uh, is that true? Is that very true? Oh, that's very false. The oligopolies, are they characterized by strategic interactions? Hello. <clears throat> we are tired. Are we, are we tired? The brain is tired, sir. How many mm -hmm. questions are we meant to deal with? <laughs> uh, OK, don't be tired, OK. We have just remained with it. Before people can go, we can do probably the last question. Which one is which? Which market structure do not recognize the hmm? do recognize it? oh which market structures do firm do firms recognize their mutual interdependence? It's a, it's a, it's oligopoly. Anyway, people of God, let's end here. Uh, you stop understanding.